Welcome back. So in the last video, we looked at when this uh, inverted pendulum on a cart is observable. Okay, so we looked at what C matrices made this pair AC observable for this full state and also for just the state x dot, theta, and theta dot. And so now we're actually going to develop a Kalman filter to estimate this full state, so all four variables from a single measurement y. And if you recall, we're going to use the measurement c equals 1, 0, 0, 0, which corresponds to just measuring the cart's x position, um, the first variable here. Okay, that was observable. So a couple of things about Kalman filtering um, or estimation in general. So it's actually pretty difficult um, to demonstrate the Kalman filter for this pendulum in the up position because that system is unstable. So what happens if I start my, my pendulum in the up position and I have my cart and I let it go and I'm, all I'm doing is estimating. So I'm not actually doing feedback control, I'm just estimating. Well, very rapidly the pendulum falls down and it leaves the region where the linearization was valid. So the linearized model is only valid near the equilibrium where the pendulum's up. And because it's unstable, the only way I can really have a good Kalman filter demonstration for the pendulum in the up position is to already be stabilizing it using full state feedback. Okay, so I'm going to wait to look at the pendulum in the up position until we're ready to combine the Kalman filter and the LQR regulator. When we combine those, we can actually look at the system in the pendulum up condition because our full state estimate will then be fed back into an LQR controller that will maintain the system stability and keep the system near the fixed point where this model is valid. But for now, we're going to look at this gantry crane configuration where the pendulum is in the down position. And all we're going to be looking at is the pendulum essentially moving, uh, the cart moving left and right, and the pendulum swinging about in the down position. Okay? So this is stable, um, observable, and that's how I'm going to demonstrate the Kalman filter. Okay? And another thing that I think is important is I'm actually going to demonstrate the Kalman filter on the linearized dynamics. So I'm really going to only simulate this linear dynamical system. Um, it is possible to use that and then apply it to estimate the state in the full nonlinear system, but it's a little bit easier in MATLAB to show you everything on the linear system. So again, when we combine LQR, regulator, full state feedback, and the Kalman filter estimator, when we combine those, then we're going to actually work with the full nonlinear system. Okay? But for now, we're going to look at the linearized dynamics about the down position. So here I have my, my basic code. I'm defining the parameters. We're looking at the pendulum down solution. I have my A matrix and my B matrix. Okay? And now I'm also defining my C matrix, which is my measurement. I'm just going to measure the pendulum, uh, the, sorry, the cart position. And D, MATLAB wants you to give the option of having this feed-through term where the input directly affects the measurement, but in our case, uh, this is just zero. There's no feed-through from U directly to Y. Okay, so D is zeros. Okay, so I'm going to run this code. Good. Now, to build a Kalman filter, there's a few extra steps that I need. Um, we're going to essentially be building an augmented system that essentially has um, disturbances and noise. Okay, so I'm going to draw this system the following way. Um, so I'm going to have my system that's essentially x dot equals ax plus bu. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in disturbances, what I'm going to call um, d for disturbances. The output of this system is going to be y, but I'm going to add noise to that measurement. Okay, so I'm going to add disturbances and noise to my system. And then um, we're going to take u, the input. This might just be, eventually I'm going to close the loop and use the estimate from my Kalman filter for full state feedback. But for now, let's just say I kick the system with some u. I, I give it some force and I see what happens. And then what our Kalman filter is going to do is essentially our Kalman filter is going to take this y with noise and it's also going to take this u 
And our Kalman filter is going to build an estimate of the full state, x hat. And this means vector x. It's this whole state of position velocity, position velocity of the cart and the pendulum. OK, so this is what our Kalman filter is going to do. And so there's a few things I have to define. So first of all, VD is a matrix of disturbance covariances. Okay? And essentially what I'm going to say is that these disturbances have essentially magnitude 0.1 times the identity matrix. So they all enter each of these states equally, 0.1 times disturbance, 0.1 times disturbance, 0.1, 0.1. If I wanted to make it so that the theta dot had a lot bigger disturbances, I would just take that element, the 4 by 4 element of this matrix, and I'd make it a lot bigger. So it has bigger noise covariance. Similarly, I have to define Vn, the, um, the measurement noise, noise covariance. And since I have a scalar measurement y, this is just a scalar, covari a scalar variance for this noise term. And I could make this bigger or smaller. And just like in the linear quadratic regulator, we had the Q and the R matrices that balanced state deviations and control expenditures. These are essentially my tuning knobs. So if I think that my model uncertainty is high or if I have really big kicks to the system, I'm going to make the VD noise covariance larger. But if I think I have really nasty big sensor noise, I have really noisy sensors, I'm going to make this Vn larger than Vd. And the ratio of those tells me kind of how this Kalman filter is going to balance its model of the system with the measurements it's getting from y. OK? Um, OK, so now what we're going to do is build this um, augmented system. I'm calling this Bf. This is kind of the full or augmented um, B matrix. So essentially what I'm going to have is I'm going to add plus, um, I'm going to say plus VD times my disturbance plus zero times noise. And down here to my measurement, I'm going to say plus zero times disturbance plus VN times noise. Okay, And so essentially, I've augmented my system. I'm kind of lumping all of this stuff together. And I'm saying x dot is ax plus bu plus some disturbance. The disturbance directly enters x dot. And my measurement y is cx. In this case, uh, d is really just 0. So I'm going to actually put 0 there. So my measurement is just cx. It's just the cart position. U doesn't enter, disturbance doesn't enter, but there is sensor noise. Okay? And so notice here in this, the B matrix now for my bigger system where my inputs are U, D, and N. So U, D, and N are inputs for my larger system. If I want to draw a box around this, then this is my augmented system. Then the B matrix now is B. It takes in inputs U, it takes in inputs D, and it takes in inputs N. Okay? And similarly, my C matrix is just I'm measuring the cart position. But my new D matrix, this feed through term, this is essentially my D term. So it's D equals 0, 0, Vn times my input, which is u, uh, d, and n. OK, so I can build this big augmented uh, state space system that essentially takes in disturbances, inputs, and noise. Um, and then just so that I know what the truth is, I'm going to have this other system full output, which essentially um, has, instead of my, my restricted measurements y equals cx, I'm going to measure all states. So I have the identity matrix for C. So I measure all of my states. Um, and essentially what I'm going to do is when I simulate my system with disturbances and noise, I'm also going to simulate this truth system, this full state output system, so that I can compare my estimated state with the true state. Okay. It seems like a lot. It actually is kind of a pain to code this up. It would almost be easier to just build this Kalman filter for a real experiment where I didn't have to code all this. But to show you in MATLAB, I want to actually add disturbances and noise.
Okay, so I'm going to run this code. Let's hope there's no errors. Okay, good. So now I have my system with a limited measurement, and I also have my truth system with the full state output measurement. And I've augmented my system to include disturbances and noise. Okay, so now the next part's actually pretty straightforward. We're going to actually build a common filter. Okay, and there's two ways of doing this. I actually like the second way better, but I'll show you both. So in MATLAB, there's a command called LQE. This stands for Linear Quadratic Estimator. Okay, and it basically gives you a common filter, but you have to give it a bunch of inputs. You give it the A matrix, you give it how this D matrix, this, this disturbance enters, you give it the measurement matrix C, and then you give it the noise covariances. So here I've kind of implicitly assumed that there's no transfer function from disturbance to system. It's just purely additive, okay? Um, but here you can assume slightly more general disturbance and noise models. And what you get out, I should probably just call this, um, instead of L, let's call it KF, the um, Kalman filter gain. And let's say, um, okay, I'll have to change everything down here too. Okay, one more place. Okay, so, but essentially what this outputs is the Kalman filter gain matrix, the, that, um, essentially the matrix that allows me to place the eigenvalues of my, my estimator. But what I think is a little bit cooler is that I can actually use the LQR command. Remember I said that observability and controllability are kind of dual formulations of the same problem? So if I give my LQR command, a transpose and C transpose, and I act like it's A and B, and I give it my disturbance and noise covariances, and I act like it's Q and R, what I get out are my Kalman filter um, gains just using this LQR optimization. So it's really cool. Basically, LQR and LQE are solving the same fundamental equations just in some kind of a transposed notation. So I just want to show you that you can kind of hijack the code from the LQR command and use that um, to, to compute this optimal Kalman filter as long as you transpose things correctly. And this is actually what I usually do. I, I usually just use the LQR command for everything because I'm really comfortable with it. Okay, so what have we done? We had our A matrix, our B matrix, and our C matrix. Those were just from the linearized equations. We're assuming we're only measuring the cart position, and we want to estimate the full state in time. Um, I have defined some disturbance and noise covariances, so I'm assuming that my system is being kicked with some disturbances, and there's also sensor noise. Uh, and I'm essentially building this Kalman filter gain matrix, just like before. And so what I, the last thing I have to do, this is actually a dynamical system. This Kalman filter is its own, you know, x hat dot equals a x plus b u and so on and so forth. And so I have to define another state space system just for my Kalman filter block. So here the A matrix is A minus Kalman filter times C. The B matrix, remember my Kalman filter takes in inputs, um, and I wish I had reversed the order here, but it takes in inputs U and Y, so those go through B and KF. The output of my Kalman filter, I actually want to measure all of the states that this Kalman filter is estimating, so I give it the 4x4 identity. That's going to give me this 4-state output. And my Kalman filter has no D matrix. It has no feed-through term. So basically, I'm going to be running my system, outputting this measurement Y, and then I'm going to be feeding that output measurement Y and my control signal U into my Kalman filter, and the output of this Kalman filter system is going to be my full state measurement X hat. Okay? So now the last thing we're going to look at is we're actually going to simulate the system in the down position, and I'm going to give it noisy measurements and disturbances, and I'm going to kick it, and then we're going to see how well our Kalman filter estimated all of these states. Okay? So again, this is, you know, I'm, I'm cooking up an example to show you all of the pieces. In the real world, this would actually be easier if all I had was measurements Y and U. In the real world for my Kalman filter, I'm going to have a model A, B, C, and I'm going to have measurements of Y and U. Okay, so that's all I'm actually going to have in the real world. So let me just 
draw a little box around this. In the real world, I'm just going to have measurements of u and y, and I'm going to be building x hat using my model of the system. All of this stuff is just for my demo. Okay, I'm just simulating what the system is doing with disturbances and noise for the demo. Okay, so I'm going to simulate from time equals uh, 0.01 to 50 in increments of 0.01. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a disturbance signal. So I'm basically going to say that my disturbance input is just some big rand and some big normally distributed random vectors. Uh, same thing with my noise. My noise is going to be a big random vector the same size as time. I'm going to say that my actuation input u, I'm going to start with just zero input. And then from dt's 100 to 120, I'm going to have a big positive impulse. And from dt's 1500 to 1520, I'm going to have a big negative impulse. So basically, that's going to be a big positive force in the x direction, followed by a big negative force in the x direction. So my cart should lurch forward and then lurch backward. Okay. Then I'm building this big augmented input that's going to go into here. Um, and then all I have to do is simulate the system. I'm going to simulate my system using this lsim command with this big input that has my actual actuation, my disturbance, and my noise. Um, so let's just plot that. OK, so this whole thing runs. And this is kind of cool. What we see is this is time on the x-axis, and the y-axis is my measurement y. And you'll see this is a big fuzzy measurement of y that is essentially, you know, the, the cart is lurching forward and then lurching backward. Okay, that's what we thought was going to happen. But there's a ton of measurement noise on top of this. So now let's actually plot what the true system is. So remember, I had that, um, that full state output model that I'm running in the background. So I'm giving it the same disturbance, but I'm giving it zero noise. So I want to know what the underlying full state is. And then I'm going to plot that on top and just see what the truth looks like. OK, so you can see this red line here is the true uh, measurement y, the true cart position without all of that sensor noise from the full state system. And so finally, what we're going to do is we're going to take that measurement y and our actuation u, which we both know, and we're going to feed that into our Kalman filter system, and we're going to see what the x hat looks like. Okay. So this is super simple. Once we have this Kalman filter system, we know what the A, B, C, and D matrices are for this Kalman filter system. All I have to do is simulate it where its inputs are now U and Y. And I'm transposing Y here just so that the, the dimensions line up. So I simulate my Kalman filter system. I get X. Why don't I just call this? Uh, I could call this X hat. I'm just going to call it X. And now I'm also going to plot what the estimated state is. Oh, did I not run my Kalman filter system? Let's run this Kalman filter system. And my Kalman filter estimate. OK, and so now you can see, it, it might be a little hard to see, but I hope you can see there's this black dashed line. OK, so the Kalman filter measurement Y is this super noisy blue signal. But because this has a model of the underlying dynamics of the system, because we know something about the system and how big the disturbances and noise are, and we also know how we're kicking the system with you, the Kalman filter is able to estimate this true underlying red signal by this black dashed, uh, dashed curve. And so you see that the black dashed curve almost perfectly lies on top of this red true uh, underlying cart position. And so our Kalman filter is doing a great job of squashing that noise and really estimating the true underlying signature. Okay, so that's very promising. But remember, our Kalman filter is not just supposed to denoise our measurements y. We also want to know what's happening with all the variables we're not measuring, x dot, theta, and theta dot. Okay, so let's finally compare our Kalman filter. So now what we're going to do is we're going to plot the true x, x dot, theta, theta dot, the, plu, the true signal, we're going to plot that in solid lines. And then we're going to plot our Kalman filter uh, estimates 
in dash lines. So this is the last thing. Okay, and let me move this over a little so we can see it. Okay, and I'm gonna so I'm gonna walk you through this. So it's a little hard to see because the curves are so perfectly on top of each other. But each of these four curves is both the true full state, the actual state of the system without noise, and then the dash line, which perfectly lies on top, is this Kalman filter estimate x hat. So if I zoom in a little bit, let's hope I can get zoomed in here, you'll actually see that my dashed lines on these four curves almost perfectly lie on top of the true solid curves. So what that means is that my Kalman filter, even though the system has disturbances and very noisy measurements and I'm actuating it, I'm able to very accurately estimate x, x dot, the position and velocity of the cart, and theta and theta dot, the position and velocity of the pendulum, just using a single noisy measurement of the cart position y. Okay? So this gives you an idea of how powerful the Kalman filter is. Even if I only measured one variable, I just measured the cart position, I'm able to back out the position and velocity of all of my components of my system using the Kalman filter. Okay, uh, So what we're going to do next, and this is actually going to be a lot more physical and intuitive, we're going to take the Kalman filter estimate in x, and what we're going to do finally is we're going to use that for closed loop feedback. We're going to say u equals minus k x hat. We're going to use our LQR and we're going to feed that back as an input to our system, and we're going to actually simulate the full nonlinear inverted pendulum on a cart. Um, so this whole part here is going to be an actual simulation of the, the real nonlinear system. We're going to use our Kalman filter to estimate the full state, and then we're going to use that to feed back into our, our LQR regulator. Okay, that's all coming up. Thank you.